Okay, we've been learning a lot. So let's see if we can answer one final question. Let's say, instead of saying, um, I wanted to give you a score, let's say, in the way I was doing it before is I was giving you some range of scores and I wanted a percent. Let's say now, I'm going to give you some percent and you have to report back to me what score is associated with that percent. We're kind of going bass backwards now. So let's say that for this particular problem, I would like to know what score is associated with the, we'll say the top 5%. Let's say the top 5% of people are going to get tickets. And so I need to know what speed is associated with the top 5% of people. Now, in your own lives, how you might have seen this is sometimes professors say the top 12% get A's. So you would like to know what's the cutoff for getting an A, right? And so this question is going to say what um, scores associated with the top 5%. Now, I just want to orient myself again. So I have 34, 14, 2. And if my question is the top 5%, really it's, it's going to be somewhere in here. Some score between 85 and 95 is going to give me the top 5%. I mean, that's a large range between 85 and 95, but still it gives me some orientation of what it is I'm looking for. So remember before when I was asking you to, I gave you a score, set of scores, and you had to give me the percent, the rules were draw it, calculate the Z, and look it up in the table. Now that I'm giving you a percent and asking you to calculate the score, the, the order is going to be a little different. It's always going to start with drawing. So you always draw it. Ugh, handwriting is horrible. If I ask you to answer some honest survey questions about how I'm teaching, make sure you say your handwriting is atrocious. All right. So we did draw it. So that's good. Now, instead of step two being calculated z-score, now we're going to have to use the table first because we're going backwards. So we're going to use the table in step two and then calculate using that Z formula that says calculate um, as our final step. So we're kind of going to go in reverse order. So let's start. So we've drawn it. We have the top 5%. Now I'm going to have to look up something in the table. So let's look at the screenshot and then let's go look up in the table something that would give us top 5%. Okay, so we're at our table, and I want the top 5%, and I want it to look like the C column, because this would be what I'm kind of looking for, looks kind of like my drawing, and I would like this to be the top 5%. But instead of looking up a Z-score, I'm going to look up the 5%. Now remember, these are in proportions, so we're going to say 0.05, because that would be the equivalent to 5%. So now I'm going to scroll in my C column, not my A column, but my C column, and look for 0.05. And I'm scrolling, and I find something very similar. So if I'm looking at 0.05, you'll notice that it's kind of halfway between the 1.64 and the 1.65. So instead of you doing the math, we're going to go ahead and have you round to 1.65. Then when we move on to inferential statistics, I'll tell you what our formal rule is for which number you use. But in this particular case, we're going to use the z-score of 1.65 is the closest we can find as being the upper 5%. So this is the z-score associated with the upper 5%. So now let's go ahead and go to our um, picture. So now we found that our z-score that we needed for the upper 5% was 1.65. So we can plug this in in one of two ways. I like to just have to remember one formula. So I'm going to plug it into my formula and solve for it. And actually, just to, to make this better, I'm going to um, switch to a new screen so we have clear space here. So I know that my z-score is 1.65. I know that how we calculate a z-score is we take the x minus the mu. That's my symbol for mu. I get lazy. Um, so here's the official look for the mu, but it's hard to draw, so I sometimes make it look like a backwards 4 <laughs> divided by sigma. All right, so 
I know my z-score. I'm going to plug in what I know. I know my z-score is a 1.65. I'm actually trying to solve for x, so I'm going to leave that alone. Then I know that the mean of the population was 75 and that the standard deviation was 10. So if we're looking at this formula, how do I get rid of the 10 in the denominator? So hopefully you remember back in the day you would take 16.5, that equals x minus 75. All right, so now how do I get rid of this 75? You're going to add it to both sides, right? So you take 16.5 plus 75 equals x. And I am terrible at simple math, so I'm going to plug it into my calculator. And my calculator, trustee, says that the answer is 91.5. Let me go back to my picture and see if that looks right. 91.5 looks about right. That would be right here. So we now know that if you go 91.5 miles per hour, you're in the top, you're at the marker for the top 5% uh, of speeders. So that's the way I like to do it. However, sometimes students just want a formula that works for them. So if I do some of this uh, moving things around, what I can tell you is that the X score will be calculated as your mu plus your Z score times your sigma. This is the same formula as this one here. I just moved things around so that you were solving for X. The key thing that sometimes gets missed is that if your z-score is negative, then this would end up being mu plus a negative z-score times sigma, which means it would be mu minus whatever number you have. So just make sure you remember that if it's a negative, it really needs to be in your calculations that way. So these are the two formulas. This one can be used for both. Or you can have this one if you're solving for x. They should both give you the same answer. All right, now let's practice with some um, examples that I, give, I can give you in some of the book too.